Well, now, since the Rotherham scandal broke last week, very few people who were central to events there have spoken out. But a little earlier, in her first interview, I spoke to one of the first people to flag up the scale of the problems in that town. Hilary Wilner from the child protection organisation Parents Against Child Sexual Exploitation was working with families in Rotherham in the late 1990s and was a close colleague of the author of the suppressed Home Office report. I asked her what she thought had led to that report being withheld. What happened to that report in Wuthering is that there was great dislike of what was being covered up. There was denial that it was happening, saying that it was exaggerated, although she was a highly, um, highly uh, competent researcher, also a solicitor, and so she was able to know, be very careful about her evidence. But it actually was drawing attention to all the failings of the local council, social care, the police and, and everyone, who were failing to deal with information that was passed to them. I mean, we were able to identify houses where the, young, where the girls were taken, as well as all sorts of other places that there would be a big network operating in places like the shopping mall. It was well known car numbers and information was handed to them, but it was told that it was, she was told that it was all anecdotal and therefore not enough to do anything about but, it. But this wasn't just Rotherham, this was Home Office input as well, directly in terms of the commissioning and the creation of this report, and it's still got completely buried. Yes, partly it was, it was stopped before it was finished, but actually the case, the, the actual detailed case knowledge and w was actually deleted from the computers. Who, that, that sorry, but who's, who stopped it then? Who, who stopped it before it was finished? Well, I, one assumes the council, the local council stopped it. Um, before it was before it was before it was finished, they did actually try to um, sack the researcher, but actually it was impossible to prove anything. So she wasn't actually sacked, but the contract was not re not renewed. And in fact, she suffered. The researcher suffered a degree of intimidation as well, oh, if I'm right. Oh yes, yes, indeed. I mean, it was made very unpleasant for her um, to continue working. She was extremely professional did it extremely well, very careful about what she did, but she was completely marginalised. So we, 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 we have the evidence of, of these girls on the streets. We have at least one instance where the police actually found somebody in bed with one of these young girls yeah. and nothing happened. We have yes. the instance where South Yorkshire police actually raided the office and still nothing happens. That does suggest the police had some material, structural, institutional reason to cover this up. I think there was a denial because of the perception that these were these were errant teenagers who were just a nuisance and and there was certainly they didn't want to get him. I mean, there are certainly instances of where parents have gone out and found the children and told the where, police where they are, not just in Rotherham but elsewhere, and it hasn't been followed up. I mean, hopefully that is less common now than it was at the time. But certainly there was a perception that received wisdom was these girls have chosen this lifestyle. They're going out, they're putting, they're, they're going out with these, these men and they've almost got what they asked for. That was really very widespread. It isn't like that now. It would be much more difficult to argue that. Would you say this was just something peculiar and poisonous about Rotherham and that town? Or is this a wider issue? Oh, it's a vastly wider issue. I mean, at the same time that we were working there, we had referrals from parents all around the country, sometimes in bigger conurbations, sometimes not. Everywhere this would have been going on, and it was completely not acknowledged, partly because of wider societal issues where it was said the girls had chosen this lifestyle to feed their drug habit. When we started and called it the Coalition for the Removal of Pimping, we were virtually laughed at. We were told this is nonsense. These girls are just, they all come from dysfunctional families or they're in care and they've chosen to do this and, you know, why should we bother? Have we got this problem nailed? Is it possible there are another 1,400 in another town? Well, I wouldn't want to bandy figures around, but it's certainly a huge amount is going on. And there is still a tendency, certainly not to, to be critical of the girls and certainly to be critical of the parents, whereas actually the parents have known the child before, during and afterwards. Authorities only see them at the point of the acute phase, if you like, of where they're being exploited. Um, but they're the ones who know their child. They're the ones who know they weren't like this before. And that is recognised much more widely than it was. And there are examples of excellent practice now. We do a lot of work in Lancashire 
where, for instance, there are multi-agency teams, including um, a, a PACE worker working with the parents, and they would say the value of working with parents who know the child has really changed their practice and resulted in far more prosecutions, which is what we need.